Here in South Africa, political process seems to be overshadowing political violence for now. Three of the major party candidates are campaigning in the last four days before these historic voting sessions began. President F.W. de Klerk on, of the National Party was in Cape Town out among the voters. Earlier, he told members of the Cape Town Press Club that South Africans who fought against apartheid should now should not lose momentum. They should focus their energies on fighting for democracy. African National Congress leader Nelson Mandela visited the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. There, he stressed the need for unity to foster economic stability in South Africa. And Mangosuto Budalesi, the Inkatha Freedom Party leader, ventured out of his native Zulu-dominated land saying regional identities should not dictate how South Africans vote. The Freedom Front of former Defense Minister Constant Vujion is the only white separatist party participating in next week's elections. But other right-wingers are threatening to disrupt the vote. In one Afrikaner stronghold in the northern part of Orange Free State, the right-wing town council has ordered the construction of barbed wire fences, roadblocks, and watchtowers to keep blacks from coming into town to vote. Black leaders have protested. Election officials are investigating, but so far, the town council is showing no signs of backing down. A leader of the right-wing conservative party is warning there will be other attempts to disrupt the election process. When you arrive here, many South Africans point to one place where they say you simply must visit, the alluring port of Cape Town. Today, South Africa's legislative capital, where the new multiracial parliament will convene. It is also a place where South Africa's political winds seem to blow a bit more gently. Here's Richard Blystone in Cape Town. He joins us now. Hello, Bernie. Uh, over my shoulder here, uh, men of many colors have been beavering away for several days now, sprucing up what will be the parliament of the new South Africa. And here's what this town is like, a little bit down the street. Uh, there is the new ANC headquarters. Out in front of that, on one single light pole, a poster showing Nelson Mandela, and one sewing or showing the white conservative Constant Villeneuve. You walk a little further down the street, a sporting goods store, where you can buy anything from hiking boots to those two-handled clubs that police sometimes carry. And around the corner, a shoe repair shop is offering special reductions for the occasion. Pretty most of the, both of the major parties here are predicting victory in this, the province where the first white Europeans landed in 1652. This bayside cradle of South Africa has always claimed the relative high ground. Blended over three centuries, a medley of colors and cultures from Europe, Africa, and Asia. And friendliness and tolerance live on in Cape Town's collective personality. The people you have a more easy way of looking at things. You're more ag agreeable to each other. I mean, we disagree, but we agree to disagree. Here, the Reverend Alan Bursack. For justice for all our people, not simply black people, but for white people as well. And the African National Congress expects substantial white support. <laughs> They'll need it. Because the National Party, ruler of the old South Africa, is bidding hard for mixed race votes and might even beat the ANC here. The colored community has always considered themselves, number one, Christians, and number two, they consider themselves to be Afrikaners. And that's why they have this close link with the National Party, because they are Afrikaners too. Favored over blacks under the old system, many coloreds fear losing status, especially the poor. The sub-economic colored people are saying this. I am better than the black man. That is what they're actually saying. I am better than the black man. So no black man is going to rule me. And some coloreds fear if the nationals win, the blacks may view them as traitors. Worries, too, in the white suburbs. The Robinson family is packing up to leave the country till all the results are in. I'm afraid the young radical black uh, people and the violence, and I'm sure nobody can, can control them. She says she's for the election, but taking no chances. Not many black fears here in central Cape Town. Not many blacks either. But out in the townships and shanty towns, fear is part of life, fear of violence and crime. No election could make things worse. 
The Nationals don't dare campaign here, and election officials worry about having enough observers, enough security. But Cape Towners tend to look up. Great. I'll be like reborn again. We have to forget, to, to, to forgive, forget about the past. We're sitting on a precipice. Uh, I mean, this is the most momentous political event in this country's history ever. It's scary. This is an opportunity to make a real change in South African society. It's very happy. If we want non-racialism to have a future in our country, it has to succeed with the people of South Africa. If it fails here, it will fail every other place. Remember, they call it the Cape of Good Hope. Not only are the people of the Cape among the most politically aware in South Africa, they're also among the most religious. And a lot of them are giving thanks these days that it's here that they're voting and not someplace else. Bernie? Richard, in terms of the campaign, what's happening right now? Well, Bernie, the campaign has been what election officials call robust. There have been charges and counter charges of dirty tricks of various kinds. One, a, race, a racist comic book. There are allegations that the National Party uh, has been recruiting gangs in the black townships where it's unable to really campaign. These have been denied and uh, called propaganda. The biggest problem with the campaign, though, is not, is not really with the campaign, but with uh, ensuring free and fair elections here. Out in the townships, it's very difficult for security forces to go, and the people who are running the election say they fear that they're only going to have about half as many volunteer observers as they really need. Thank you, Richard Blystone, reporting live from Cape Town, South Africa. Reporting live, you'll be doing a lot of that over the next 10 to 12 days on CNN and CNN International. South Africa will never be the same, as you know, after next week. And the symbolism is everywhere. At one minute before midnight local time on Tuesday, South Africa's current national flag will be taken down in Pretoria and replaced with a new banner. Today, the flag of the nominally independent homeland of Siskai was lowered in front of the National Assembly of the homeland's capital. When we return, an interview with a former South African parliament member who was a few decades ahead of her time.